Imagine you're at a pizza party. The client is like you, the hungry player at that party. You get to enjoy the delicious pizza, which we'll call the game, and interact with everything around you. You see the toppings, the cheese, and the crust, and that's what the client does. It's all about your experience. Now the server is like the chef in the kitchen. They make sure the pizza is cooked perfectly and that everyone at the party gets the same tasty pizza. The server manages the game, keeping it fair and synchronized for all the hungry players like you at the party. Now with the client and the server, we have two different types of scripts. We have server scripts or your normal scripts that you'd use and that we have been using over the course of the scripting series. And then we have local scripts, which are for the client and will only run for the client. Local scripts are like personal notes or even instructions that you'd write on your napkin while eating your pizza. They only affect your experience as a player, so when you want something to happen that's specific to you, like changing the color of your pizza slice, you'd use a local script. It's for things that don't need to be shared with everyone else at the party. Now, imagine you want to have a pizza eating contest with all your friends at the party. You'd need a referee to make sure everyone follows the rules and to keep score. That's what server scripts do. Now that we know the difference between the client and the server, let's go ahead and use a local script. So let's go over to the starter player folder over here on the right and we're just going to click on this little arrow that will open it up. Inside of starter player you're going to see two more folders right here. Now starter player scripts, let me explain this. When a player joins into your game, there are two things that happen. The player joins and shortly after that the character joins. The character and the player are not the same thing. The character is the player's avatar and the visual representation of their player, whereas the player itself is where all the GUI goes, where most of the data is held, and I'm going to show you by clicking on play right here. So when I join the game, you'll see that inside of the player service, it has my name right here, Rusty Silly Band, and inside of here this holds my backpack which has all of my tools, starter gear which will hold even more tools, player GUI which will handle all of the GUI on your screen such as the texting, such as the any GUI that you have made, and will even hold this little folder for player scripts. And this is where all those scripts that are inside of that starter player scripts folder go. As you can see there is the player scripts loader, the RBX character sounds, and the player module scripts inside of here and you can see that those three scripts are inside of my player scripts in Yimabob right here. If we were to open up the workspace you'll also see a model called Rusty Silly Band which in your case will be the name of your avatar and you can see that this will hold the body colors of my character, the pants, the shirt, every single body part and it even has a few scripts of its own inside of here. And that is where the starter character scripts go. So the starter character scripts will go inside of the player's character or their model inside of the workspace, whereas starter player scripts will go into the player service inside of there. For the most part, you're really only going to be needing to use a specific one once you get into more advanced scripting. But for now, for just for user input service, I'm just going to be adding in a local script into starter character scripts. So let's just go ahead and click on the plus icon over here and click on a local script. Let's start off up here just saying local user input service and this is going to be equal to game colon get service parentheses quotation marks user input service just like this. User input service allows us to interact with players and help create responsive gameplay. It can detect various player actions such as mouse clicks, keyboard presses, and mouse movements even which is pretty cool as well as certain other devices such as mobile devices like a phone or tablet which we can use to handle input that way such as the touch of a screen or even on an Xbox or PlayStation controller for example. After that we can say user input service and then we have two events that we can fire off of from there. We have input begin and then we have input ended. I'm going to show you what both of these will do in a second but we're going to start off with input begin and we're going to put colon, connect, parentheses, function just like this, and then parentheses on the end. Now when we use user input service dot input begin, there are two parameters that automatically get sent to our function. We have an input, which is an input object, 
or an object created when an input begins that describes particular user input as we see right here. And then we have something called the game processed event, which is a Boolean. And the game processed event, this will return a true or false value to determine if the player is currently typing basically whether they're typing in the chat, whether they're typing inside of a text button inside of a GUI. If they're typing in general, we can determine whether or not we're going to detect that input or not. So if you do not want to detect the typing input, you can say if game processed event, then return end. That'll make sure that the function will not continue if they are typing. Otherwise, you can just continue to ignore the game processed event. However, I'm going to leave that as it was. Now we can say if input. Now just inside of this function right here, I'm just going to create a print statement that says user input detected with an exclamation point. And let's go ahead and click on play and look in the output. So when I join the game, if I'm to press any button or click or do anything on my client right here, you can see that is detecting any input that I make, even just moving the camera around, right clicking, any input that I choose to put in here is going to be detected. But there's a certain way that we can detect certain inputs. So let's say we only wanted to detect it whenever I press the F key on my keyboard. I can say if input dot key code is equal equal to enum, which is short for enumeration dot key code dot F. And you can change this to any other key that you want to, such as Q, even left shift, left control, right shift if you'd like to, but I'm just going to leave it at F. And when we click on play, which I just made a big mistake right here, then we're going to print F was pressed. So I forgot key code needs to have a capital C right here. Input dot key code is equal equals to enum dot key code dot F. Let's go ahead and click on play. So now you'll see that whenever I press the F key right here, it's going to say F was pressed. But any other input that I choose to do is not going to be detected, which is pretty cool unless I press F, of course. So that's how we can detect specific input inside of Roblox. Now there is also if input dot user input type, which describes the kind of input being performed, whether that be a mouse, a keyboard, a gamepad, even touch or any other item is equal equal to enum dot user input type dot and you can go through and choose any of these that you want to. For me, I'm just going to choose mouse button one, then we're going to print mouse button one was pressed. Let's go ahead and click on play now and you can say see that whenever I click mouse button one was pressed. So since we're using in user input service dot input began, what this is going to do is that it's going to determine the input and print everything that we need it to as soon as the input begins, which is as soon as the player clicks or as soon as the player touches their key. But you can even change this to input ended. And what this is going to do is that when we click play, You'll notice it's actually not going to detect any input while I click, but as soon as I let go of click, that it starts to actually detect the input. And I believe that that is about all you need to know about user input service for the moment. Of course, we can always go into further details, such as more events that we can run off of with user input service, because there is a lot of user input that we can detect with this, such as user input service dot device rotation changed. Like there are a lot of cool things that we can do with this. So if you guys like this tutorial just as much as I did, and if it helped you, please make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.